All right, guys, I am going to interview Johnny Moe today. And uh, this is one guy that we all need to listen to. Uh, his channel is full of tips and tricks about growing your business, about expanding the crews, about plowing, uh, about employees, and estimating lawns, estimating fertilizer, all kinds of stuff, man. This guy is very energetic. Uh, and there's not a channel on YouTube that I've found that, that is like Johnny Moe. So I'm very excited to interview Johnny Moe. We're going to be doing that here in just a little bit. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm a little bit nervous. He, he's where all of us are trying to get to, to be honest with you. And I think uh, most of us would agree with that. And uh, he, has a, he has a lot of information that we all need to listen to. So if you haven't checked out Johnny Moe's channel, please do. Well, let's get started. I got Johnny Moe here. We're going to interview Johnny Moe and see what he has to, has to say here. So Johnny, how you doing, buddy? Doing good, Brian. Thanks for having me on the show. Hey, no problem. I love watching your videos, Johnny. You're a very, uh, very motivating guy and very inspiring. Thank you. I watch all your stuff too, my man. Every <laughs> single video. That's awesome. So, uh, so what have you been doing lately, Johnny? Uh, honestly, it's a lot of plowing. I mean, <clears throat> just uh, plowing snow. Uh, my daughters play basketball. Um, I also follow my wife and I are the coach. We also follow a local high school basketball team where I graduated from, and we've been in the playoffs, and we won the state title last year. We've been in the playoffs five years straight, so me and my daughters and my wife, we go there a lot too. So basically family and work. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely understand that. So I know you're a big racquetball guy. Did you ever get into football or anything like that? You're built like a football player. I did. I played. I played football, and I also played basketball. Yeah, yeah. In high school, I did. Was you any good? Uh, basketball, I was. Uh, football, um, I wasn't that good in football, to be honest with you. I was okay. I, I was kind of lazy, to be honest with you, on the football field. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you these great stories and just lie to you. No, I, 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 I was lazy. It was too hot for me to play, man. I hated all that equipment on. So yeah, I understand. But I held my own. I held my own. All right. Well, I I posted a video last night, Johnny, and it's kind of uh, it's kind of started to uh, we had a we had a nice discussion on my on my channel last night with uh, with different trucks for the business, and I've heard you mention in some of your other videos that uh, you know you kind of need the big boy trucks if you want to move up. Yeah. Uh, what do you prefer, Johnny? Do you run gas or do you run diesel? Uh, at this time, Brian, I, I run I run gas. And, you know, I've done the studies. You're only getting about three miles per gallon more out of the, out of, um, the diesels. I mean, you're only saving about three gallons more. I haven't seen your video, and I apologize. That's all right. Um, but I, <clears throat> when I did the study originally, you'll spend about – nine to ten grand more on that particular truck I mean sometimes you can get a deal um, but right now I run all gas I don't have a need for a diesel um, so that's what I prefer I prefer 2500 HDs um, I mean if you're pulling something that you need you need you need that diesel power by all means go after it if you can use it but as far as you know as far as when I did the studies on the diesels are more powerful. Um, they're they're going to last a lot longer, but you're going to pay a lot more, and you're not going to get a return on your investment gas-wise because it's going to be made up in the engine cost. And just because it's a diesel and it'll run longer, it doesn't matter when you're snow plowing because they all rot out the same. And so I try to stick to the lower-end work package trucks, minimum 2,500 HDs. It can pull my enclosed trailer. And, you know, it's still going to rot out, you know, six, seven years into the deal. But that's what, what I found over the last 19 years to be the best um, bang for your buck. Because you're going to trade it in or you're going to get rid of it after seven years. It's just worthless. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. So what's your what's your thoughts on the uh, 1500 truck? Do you just not think it's uh, it can, you know, handle the workload? or? Um, you know, when you, when you start growing your business, when you're a – when you're a solo guy and there's nothing wrong with being solo, you know, I know sometimes I come off a little goofy and it seems like I'm bashing solo guys, but I'm really not because I started out solo. Um, 
basically a 1500 truck when you're solo is fine, but when you, I call it the big boy truck and it's about payload. You know, when you're hauling stone or you're hauling salt, you got a, if you got a 800 pound plow sitting off the front of your truck and then you've got a half a ton of salt sitting in the rear, your payload isn't good. Um, you get pulled over, they put a scale under you, you're done. If you got a 1500, you can basically just put a 800 pound plow in the front of your truck and it can't really even handle it. And then you can hardly carry any salt at all. And you know, when you're dealing with mulch, uh, I haul a lot of mulch and I put a dump bed in my 2500 HD and you know, I can get about five yards legally, you know, 1500, maybe two yards legally. And or in Pennsylvania, DOT is really strict. I mean, I've been pulled over five times in one year. Really? And they'll, they'll weigh you. And you've got a 1,500 truck. You're pulling a trailer that's that's got two Zs on it. And that's that's why I always say when you're building your business, you want to think about that. You're going to be hauling two Zs. You're going to be throwing some stuff in the payload of the truck. And you become very mm -hmm. illegal. And those are huge, huge fines to be dealing with. As states struggle to find funding, they find it in DOT fines very easily with guys like us because, you know, just snow plowing alone, when you stick that 800-pound plow right on the front of it, you're almost illegal going out of the box. Yeah. So uh, do you recommend, like, like I've heard you talk in some of your videos about mowers, about not doing the step up, not getting the 36 and then the 48 and then the 60. Just go ahead and buy the 60. Do you recommend a guy, if he has the means, to just go ahead and get a 2,500 truck? Um, you know, that's a little difficult. I might buy a used one, Brian. Um, you know, these things are expensive. You yeah. know, mine, mine new last year or two years ago was $35,000. Um, I did a – I had a F-150 I first started out with. Um, and as soon as I went to the two zero turns, I had to go buy the truck. And it, it was tough. It was a big expense for us, but then three years later, I bought the second truck. So, mm -hmm. you know, I if you know that you're going to grow and you know that you're going to put on cruise, um, I suggest highly finding a 2500 HD used, uh, three quarter ton, and maybe if you can find a plow on it. You know, the step up Z's. Again, if I could go back and do it, I would go right from a 36 right to a 60. Yeah. Down. No, no doubts about it. Yeah, I, I made that mistake too. Is I, I have two forty eights, and uh, right now I'm wishing I had a sixty. So, yeah. And, uh, and talking to you with all your properties, I mean, you you could free up some time. Even as a solo guy, you know what will happen, Brian, is you'll end up if you get a sixty or you get a fifty two or you get the bigger deck, you'll stop selling the the push mill lawn. And you'll go right for the bigger lawns because you want to ride. You want to drive your biggest piece of equipment. You don't want it sitting on the trailer. Yeah. So your business aspect will change right away as soon as you do that. Yeah, I've I've uh, I've realized that over the winter. I'm trying to uh, do some calculations on how I can improve on uh, you know getting yards cut faster and this and you know that kind of stuff. And uh, a lot of my properties don't even have fenced yards. And uh, mm -hmm. So a 60 would be so beneficial for me, and I'm, I'm regretting my, my 48 purchase right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you live and learn, Johnny. Absolutely. That's part of the business. Uh, but, you know, channels like yours, uh, you know, kind of helped me realize that, that I, I should have went ahead and bought the 60. And, uh, I'm, you know, and that's kind of that's why I like your channel, Johnny, is you have a different aspect on lawn mowing and about business than a lot of us have because like I told you before that your channel is you're already at a place where a lot of us are trying to get to so there's not there's not very many channels on YouTube like yours that will give the advice on how to get to where you're at and you've been doing it for 20 years so I I think I speak for everybody when I say I appreciate your uh, your advice and your uh, your knowledge on the uh, subject I appreciate that Brian thank you very much yeah. That's why I joined YouTube, you well, know. Yeah, I, took, I, I did the same thing. You know, I'm, I'm here to learn. I'm here to uh, maybe, you know, help somebody else out that's in a uh, same position. And it's a good feeling. 
Absolutely. You know, when I first started in the 90s, there, was, there wasn't a lot of people out there. And, and the people that were there doing it, you know, in the 92, 93, 94, uh, there wasn't a lot of people. You know, 96 is when it kind of started to really blow up. And that's where I entered into was 96. And there just a lot of people weren't out there. You know, there wasn't a lot of advice given. And it's all trial and error. And, you know, 20 years later, you're kind of like, hey, I, 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 can, I have a voice now, too. You know, mm -hmm. I always said I'd read all these trade magazines and they'd always interview these three million dollar companies, <laughs> and these 10 million. And I'm sitting there I'm like, what about us, man? What about us? And that that's basically why I started the channel, you know, just for that aspect, you know, for the middle of the road guys. You know, I don't live. I live in the Rust Belt. Uh, our state has declared us. Um, financially poor it's a distressed area uh, we, we're not there's no million dollar companies here and there's no million dollar companies trying to come in here either yeah so I'm that middle of the road guy just trying to help people out so what would you say to the guy Johnny that is wanting to start a business but is a little bit afraid of getting into this business because of the cost and because of the the work what would you say to that guy um Basically, I would tell them to sit down and really think about what you want to do in life. You know, when I entered this business, I made this statement to my wife. I said, I didn't want to be 60 years old and come to, the, you know, to retirement to find out that I didn't take this chance. You know, there's no guarantees that you're going to make it in this business. It's, it's just there's no guarantees. In fact, the statistics say that 95% of all startup landscape businesses fail. So you've already got that going against you, but I, I would say to go after what you're passionate about and to do that, to continue to work and, and make that decision, make that leap. You know, it's not that expensive to get into this business. You can tiptoe into the business or you can run into the business. As you know, in my branch theology, I believe you should tiptoe in because if, if you get in over your head, it's not working out, you can always pull out. But I'm a big believer. I don't want to be at the end of my life saying, man, I really wish I would have did this. I really wish I would have did that. Now it's been almost 20 years now, and I'm like, hey, man, that decision I made back in 1997, you know, to, to go after my own business, you know, I'm, I'm glad I made it, man. I mean, I really am. So I would tell you, look at stories like mine. Look at stories like other people on YouTube and be like, just, hey, go after it, you know. You'll always have fear. There's still fear here after 20 years. You know, I, I get up, there's still that little bit anxiousness about will it rain this year? Will it snow? Or, you know, you know, I went through a drought in 2001, man. That was the hardest thing we ever went through in business. I mean, there was no work from June to September. And that was rough. So there'll always be something to fear. There's a fear of maybe the IRS coming. There's a fear of you know, whatever the fear may be, you're not going to get all your work done. It's rained three weeks in a row, and you don't know how you're going to do it. There's always fear. It's just you overcoming and just keep going forward. And I believe good things happen once you keep going forward and don't give up. Yeah, you know, for me, Johnny, I've you know, I'm 38 years old, and uh, I've been mowing part time for for a company since I was 20. And mm. there's you know, there's nothing I wouldn't give to go back then and say, you know what, I'm not going to work for this guy for seven bucks an hour or six bucks an hour or whatever it was back then, and I'm going to start my company now. But yeah. you know, back then, Johnny, I was—I'll be honest with you, man—I was scared to death. I didn't know what I, I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't—I didn't want to take that chance. But uh, you know, now that I'm older, I, hopefully I'm a little bit wiser. Uh, I wish I would have took that chance back then. I, you're doing it now, though. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, like you said, you know, you don't you don't want to go through life wishing you would have done something. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe it works out and maybe it doesn't, but at least you gave it a shot. Yeah, I mean, it. <clears throat> that was my biggest thing. I remember the conversation like it was yesterday, and I just, I just kept saying at the end of my, I I knew when I was working the job I was working. I was in the landscape field. I'd get up at 5.30 in the morning, and I, I would just have that feeling like, oh, I don't want to do this. I hate it. But I was getting paid such a good wage, and I was married. So you're kind of like, you know, what do you do? you, you got to take care of your family at the same time. 
you can't go through that life like that. I believe that's why a lot of men die early because they're doing something they absolutely hate. I mean, I can tell you my alarm clock goes off at 3 o'clock in the morning and goes snowplow. I'm up and at them, man. I, I love it. You know, I love getting up. I'm not saying I don't have challenges in the field. I'm just saying I don't mind those challenges because I like getting up. I like plowing. I like mowing. I like taking uh, bushes that look terrible and then to shape them into something really good. And you can go to sleep. To, I go to sleep. My head hits that pillow. I'm out. There is no anxiety. I'm out. It's over. <laughs> I'm the same way, man. When it's when it's mowing season, when I get home and I wind down and I've done the family thing, man, I'm out. <laughs> there is no there is no laying in bed watching TV. There is no, you know, whatever. But yeah, as soon as my head hits the pillow, I'm gone. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> but a lot of that is we're not we're not spring chickens anymore, Johnny. <laughs> no, I just turned forty one yesterday, so Did you? I, I know what you mean. What was some of your biggest challenges you faced when you were starting your business, Johnny? Um, fear, honestly, was was probably the biggest. Um, it, as a man, most men have a fear of failure. And I, I could say that fear was, was one of the biggest. Um, navigating the challenges of being newly married and running a small business, I, I didn't have a very good priority list, and it affected my marriage the first the first uh, year. Um, so those are the two things. Uh, financially, you're, when you're in business and you're first starting up, there's no extra money to do anything with. And we had just got married. And that was the biggest challenge of, of dealing with no money at all. Um, that's what makes our life now so pleasurable because of the sacrifices that we both made back then. It wasn't just me. It was her. You know, she couldn't go shopping. You know, the the food wasn't always there readily available in the house, meaning, you know, we were eating macaroni and cheese and hot dogs. Or, you know, <clears throat> there were some weeks where, you know, we were just making the bills with nothing in the bank. And those were very, very challenging. I, I, I can't say that. It, it, a piece of advice I definitely would give people, sorry, if, is 70% of people in our field are divorced in this field. And I could see why, because it's so addicting. You're out there trying to make a lot of money. So when, when you're dating someone or you're married to someone, to have them be by your side and walk you through it is very, very important. Because if you don't have that, you're done. And I know a lot of guys, even in my hometown, that are divorced. This business just sucked them dry and... That's the end of it. And those were the biggest challenges, fear of failure. You know, am I going to be a failure? That was the biggest. Hmm. So how long have you been married, Johnny? Uh, let me see, 14 years. 14 years. I usually have all my questions on it, but you're, you're, a, you're a different person. I can't ask you those questions. <laughs> you can ask, ask away. I don't care. Well, I can't. What, what I'm trying to say, Johnny, is I can't. I can't ask you what your, you know, what your goals are because I think you've already, you know, you've already explained in your videos. You're kind of as big as you want to get right now, right? Yeah, I mean, at this point in my life, with with, I believe I I gave a priority in one of the videos, is God first, wife, kids, um, work, church, hobbies, and right now my kids need me a lot, and you know my kids are in plays, my. Um, my daughters both play basketball. We're very active in their lives, and they play softball too. So my wife and I re rearrange our schedule uh, to make sure that we're at everything. And really, I just my town wouldn't support um, a bigger business. You know, it might in the future with gas wells and oil wells coming in, maybe some people will come here and that'll change the dynamics of the finances. But right now, we're kind of at that. You know, we're growing different areas of the business. One of the statements I always say, healthy things grow. And so there's got to be aspects of your business that's always growing. Right now, my snow plowing is growing. My fertilizing side of the business is growing. We cannot take any more mowing on. Um, it's just, it's too much. We have too much as it is. And my landscaping has grown. So there's different ways to, to make it grow without getting so large that it, it just consumes you. So we... There's no five-year goal. 
And I was never big on five or 10 or 15 year goals because as you grow as a person, your perspective changes and the way that you view life changes. You know, when I was young, I was a Democrat. Now I'm older, I have different views. So you, you change as, as you grow. And it's hard to make a, well, in 10 years, I'm going to be a multi-million dollar company, but you live in the Rust Belt with only 60,000 people in your county. Yeah. It's like, it's unrealistic. And then all of a sudden you have to change your perspective and your thinking and your lifestyle and things of that nature, if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> oh, that, make, that makes a lot of sense, Johnny. It really does. So do you, do you like the mowing aspect of lawn care better or like, would you rather do landscaping and? Oh, uh, no, mowing. Mowing by far is, is, I think it's my favorite. I like snow plowing. I like getting up when no one else is out and getting in my truck and spending, you know, a couple hours, few hours on my own, listening to what I want to listen to, books. Uh, mot I listen to a lot of motivational books. Um, any music I listen to is motivational too. I, I don't listen to anything that's negative. I don't listen to the news. I don't listen to Fox. I don't listen to CNN. I think if a Democrat's in office, CNN is the happiest. So I don't listen to a lot of the news aspects, um, but mowing is definitely my most favorite. Um, I, I just love to mow grass. It's just, I, I love, I love getting on his ear turns. I like striping the lawns. And as far as landscaping, I absolutely hate pruning bushes, but it's a must because of that drought I experienced. It showed me that I needed to have a diversification. So there was something for me to do to keep me busy and also people that you hire, you have an obligation to help keep them busy too because they're relying, you're putting food on their table also. And so having that diversification to lose four months is it's a lot, that was a lot of income for us, but luckily we had a lot of pruning and, and we still have that today. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's real important to have dif different aspects of your business, like you said, to where, you know, if one thing isn't, isn't, isn't thriving at that time, you can move on to other stuff and still make some money and keep your business afloat. Absolutely. But I'd like to thank you, Johnny, for coming on here, doing this interview with me. And uh, I wish you all the success, man. I appreciate it, man. Uh, enjoy your channel, and thanks for having me, man.